Welcome back for our next segment. We're going to be hearing from Bill Stiles with the Johnson Group about the importance of economic recovery advertising. Thank you, Donna, for that introduction. You know, unless your name is Bezos, your business has probably gone through a tough time over the last 14 months. Maybe you had to close your doors for a while, or perhaps you closed them forever. Maybe you had to furlough some really productive employees, or you lost those employees because they needed to stay home to care for children who could not go to school or, or daycare. Perhaps you had trouble getting inventory to sell, or raw materials to manufacture. Perhaps your best customers remained good customers, but because of their own difficulties, they couldn't pay you on time. Or maybe over the months, your customers and cash flow just dwindled to a fraction of what it used to be. Maybe your business did quite well, but even that was not without a lot of challenges and changes. Fill in the blanks with your own story. This pandemic year has been tough for a lot of businesses and consumers. But we've turned a corner, right? Uh, the vaccines are out, uh, the masks are coming off, restrictions are being lifted, and now things are getting back to normal, aren't they? The title for this talk is Bouncing Back, Five Ideas for Marketing and Advertising in Post-Pandemic Chattanooga. I want to spend a few minutes talking about some ideas area businesses might consider to be more successful marketing, promoting, and attracting customers right now as we all try to return to normal in the world of COVID-19. And here is the first idea I want to share with you, my, my first point. Normal, at least the normal we knew back in 2019, is never coming back. In just a few quick months, this virus changed the way most of us work, do business, serve customers, deliver product, and get paid. And now that we've made those changes, we're not going back, at least not 100%. It turns out our customers like a lot of those changes. Business owners like some of them too, because th those changes saved us money and they lowered operating costs and they enhanced the customer journey. In the past year, many of us, for the very first time, bought tickets to watch a live concert online, had a meal delivered that was not a pizza, uh, picked up a hardware order curbside, paid $20 to watch a newly released Hollywood movie in our living room were examined by a doctor using a smartphone. Uh, we worshiped online, we tithed online, we even took communion online. We registered for online workshops or a Chamber of Commerce Expo. We toured a house virtually, bought a car without driving it first. We paid a bill on Venmo and we put in a good day's work without ever putting on a pair of shoes. And now that we've done all these things, do you think we're just going to stop? Whether you've accepted it or not, and whether you're ready or not, your business model has changed. I believe that every business is now an online business. That's my point number two, by the way. In the post-pandemic world, every business must explore and embrace the best ways to engage and acquire customers online. There may be some businesses that will be exceptions, but I'm not sure what they are. Yes, there'll be stores and offices and showrooms and sales calls, but chances are your business will have an online component to be successful. Doing business online the right way means providing your customers with easier access to your people, your products and your services. Let that sink in, easier access. The marketing-minded business that will best succeed will be those who are successful removing barriers that discourage potential customers from becoming satisfied customers. Whether that be in a virtual space or a physical space or a combination of the two. You know, the restaurant business has had a terrible time of it. It's sad how many of our favorite Chattanooga eating places have closed in the past year. And I know that a lot of you, like my family, have tried to patronize area restaurants when we can, even if we take the food home to eat. A few months ago, my wife and I decided that we were in the mood for meatloaf. We needed some comfort food. So I Googled the best meatloaf in Chattanooga and I found several articles and a top 10 list. I used the Yelp app on my phone to find the number for one of the restaurants with the most highly rated meatloaf. 
A recording said the restaurant accepted orders online only, which was okay with me. I tapped through to the website and looked at the menu. This restaurant was proud of their meatloaf, and it was going to be a pricey dinner. But I was looking for an experience, so I was ready to pay. The ordering interface was clunky. I couldn't order two meatloaf dinners. I had to order one, then save it, and order the second one. It took a while to navigate, but I made it through. Then I put in my name and phone number and credit card number, etc., and I tapped the space that said order. And then I got a message saying that to complete my order, I needed to register with their restaurant group customer loyalty program. They wanted my name again and my food preferences and birth date and email address. I did not want to register for their club or get special offers. I didn't want to get an email on my birthday. All I wanted was overpriced meatloaf. There was no way to back out of the form and there was no way to skip it. The company was forcing me. No email, no food. Frustrated, I closed the app and canceled the transaction. Then I used Yelp to find another restaurant from the meatloaf top 10. Placed my order over the phone, didn't have to give a credit card number, and picked it up 20 minutes later. The point of this story is that one restaurant embraced an online business model, which was good, but they did not make it easy for customers to access what they're selling. The second restaurant had a minimal online presence, but they made it easy on me. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the buffalo meatloaf at the Terminal Brew House is terrific. Think about your marketing model, your customer funnel, if you will, and think about how you can best serve your customers online and, if you have physical spaces, also in person and then make it easy for your customers to be very, very happy with you. Here's a tip. Think about what makes you a very happy customer, and then do that. This gets me to my idea number three for prospering in the post-pandemic marketplace. Your next customer is likely to be an existing customer. To grow your business right now, consider how to engage your existing customer base and encourage them to be your customer again. Now I know what you're thinking. Bill, did you not just spend two minutes shaming the restaurant that tried to make you register for their customer loyalty program? My problem with that restaurant was not that they wanted me to register for a customer loyalty program. It is that they made that registration a barrier to me getting what I wanted. There's a big difference. Every business should know who its customers are and have ways to engage with them not to drive them nuts, not to email them every day, but to sell to them and communicate with them in ways that anticipate and meet customer needs and wants. It's springtime. If Ace Hardware wants to send me a coupon for fertilizer, I'm interested. If Express Oil Change wants to remind me that it's time to bring my car in, I'm interested. Think about who your customers are and what motivates them to buy then use that knowledge to engage and interest them and encourage them to buy anew. Experiment with this. Divide your customer list in half and run two different offers as an A-B test. Then kill the loser and develop another test. Keep at it, continually testing new ideas and getting better and better at converting your customers. Here's a good local example to model. Are any of you customers of Rock Creek Outfitters? Rock Creek does a very good job of engaging their outdoor loving customer base. They post really good photos and stories of outdoor adventures. They post ads on social media that make you dream about climbing a steep rock face in your Patagonia pants. And even if you're a gray headed and afraid of heights, you kind of buy in and get excited about it. So kudos to Rock Creek. I actually enjoy being in their customer database. If you want to observe a model of effective marketing to existing customers, go buy something at Rock Creek and sign up for their loyalty program. Erlanger is another local example of an organization that does this well. I encourage you to follow them on Facebook and sign up for their Healthy You online newsfeed. You'll learn not only about health matters, but also how to engage effectively with customers online. So here's point number four, like Rock Creek, like Erlanger, if you want to energize your post-pandemic online marketing strategy, 
then get really good at advertising on social media, particularly Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and TikTok. Now your business does not need to advertise on all of those platforms, but you need to use the ones that match up with your desired customers. That's what social media is really good for, matching your message to your most likely customers. Do you want to reach older moms and baby boomers? They're on Facebook. You want to reach millennials? Instagram. Does your business rely on free spending teenagers? TikTok. Billionaire ex-presidents? Twitter, maybe. Remember that old quote you've heard a million times, supposedly said by J.C. Penney or P.T. Barnum, uh, that I know I'm wasting half of what I spend on advertising, but I don't know which half? Well, J.C. Penney and P.T. Barnum did not have social media, which will allow a savvy marketer to pinpoint customers by the areas they live in, their ages, genders, life stages, their jobs, their hobbies, and any other areas of interest, what they buy, what they like to shop for, what they click on, the videos they watch, their travel plans, their belief systems, their political views, their lifestyle choices, and so much more. If you're in the business of selling organic ink to vegan tattoo artists, you can find them and target them on social media. Now, I'm not speaking negatively of other forms of advertising media. There are strong arguments for using them all. But social media seems especially appropriate for a lot of local businesses right now as the world emerges from this period of semi-isolation. Social media and, and other online digital advertising complements your business online strategy because it's seamless. One click and your customer is on your site ready to buy. Advertising on social media is also highly cost effective. You can reach a lot of people for a few hundred dollars on social media. That's how Mark Zuckerberg got so rich, a hundred dollars at a time. All of the major social media platforms have online help and tutorials that will guide you toward becoming a proficient advertiser. Or you can look into hiring one of the many fine advertising agencies in our area who are very experienced in all forms of online marketing. The many ways you can get your advertising message to your customers have exploded in recent years. Much of that explosion was fueled by the isolation of the pandemic. For example, most of us are watching more and more television via streaming apps like Hulu, Apple Plus, Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, Discovery Plus, Paramount, and many more. It's called Over the Top TV, or OTT. And you can place advertising on most of it. Now, I'm not advising you to do that necessarily, but a good advertising agency or consultant can help you sort through it all and figure out the most effective ways to motivate your customers via the wild new world of digital media. Let's get to point number five. My fifth idea for bouncing back with more effective marketing and advertising is this. Remain alert, nimble, and ready to change again, because the marketplace can be turned on its ear at any time very quickly. This virus could mutate, spread, and the economy could partially close down again before the summer is over. The vaccine supply could be disrupted. Herd immunity could prove elusive. We just don't know what's going to happen. So we have to be nimble. We have to be ready. Now, what does that mean, really? Well, it could mean a contingency plan for serving your customers should you have to close again or should your supply chain be disrupted? It could mean setting up ways to communicate with your customer base quickly and interactively should the need arise. It could mean having new ads ready that support your temporary business model so that you can get the right messages out to the market fast. It could mean a different approach to media buying and ad placement so that you can always change your message quickly should you need to. For example, a vinyl billboard can take weeks to redo, but a digital board can be changed in an hour. And I'm not trying to sound overly dramatic here, but it could mean a contingency plan should you or key personnel who are important to your revenue stream get sick and unable to work for a period of time. Think back to March 2020. None of us really knew what was going to happen. I remember standing in a long line to get into a grocery store and then, once inside, walking past aisle after aisle of empty shelves and thinking, 
These are scary times. Where will we be a year from now? By the grace of God, we've come through it so far. Hopefully we're smarter. Hopefully we're more resilient and grateful for what we have. This is our post-pandemic spring, a time to rethink, renew, and reimagine how we live our lives and do our work, including the work of marketing and advertising. My hope is that all of you will have a great year. And my hope is you found these few minutes together to be worthwhile. Thank you for your attention, and thank you to the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce for their work to make this expo happen. Enjoy. Enjoy.